Hey everyone, got a pretty cool video today. Uh, in today's video, we're gonna be going over my plumbing setup, the components I used, and all the fittings. Um, I know some of you guys have been waiting for this video to come out for a couple months now, so let's go ahead and get to it. I'll try to go over everything with uh, as much detail as possible, but if you guys need to figure out which fittings or components I used, I'll put a link to all those uh, so you can access them later. And as always guys, just a quick disclaimer, if you don't feel comfortable working with electrical, plumbing, um, or tying any of those components together, reach out to a professional who might be able to help you guys out. The way I set up my plumbing system is not the end all be all. Um, there are other ways to do this. This is what I found to be uh, the most effective and efficient um, setup for my system, for my camper. So um, take everything that you see here with a grain of salt and use uh, this video just as a reference to uh, supplement your own research. And as you can see, we're nearing the end here of our camper project. I just have to finish mocking up the walls. You can see some of it behind me here. And I also did a little bit of the control panel right there. But I think the next video I may go over uh, my electrical setup. I know some of you have been asking about that. And my expansion battery from Blue Eddy actually just came in, the B230. You can kind of see it down there. It's charging the AC200. Um, and it's doing really well. So maybe I'll do a video on that if you guys want to see. But I think uh, the electrical and the walls are the only things that are, that are left. And then obviously the last 5 to 10% are just the finishing touches. So I'll catch you guys next time. Here's a quick flyover over the entire system. You can see I thoughtfully laid out all of the components so that one, it'll be easy to service if I need to, and then two, the components are spaced out in a way so that the tubing attaches to each component really naturally without any kinks or bends and allows for the system to be uh, very clean and aesthetically pleasing. The tubing I used was a combination of PEX pipe, that's the red and blue piping, and ID tubing, which is the clear tube that you see uh, near the back of the water tank. I'd say the majority of my fittings are sharp, shark bite fittings and valves. Uh, these are great because they're really easy to use and you can find them at Lowe's or Home Depot really easily. And also they don't leak and they carry a very long warranty. Starting from the back here, I have three penetrations through the back panel, the hot and cold connections for the shower mixing valve, the city connection or the water city water inlet connection that fills up my water tank. At the bottom I have my drain valve if I ever want to quickly service the tank. And then on the top I have a connection for the cuss water meter gauge. On the back I have the pickup for the water pump with ID tubing connected to a strainer, which is connected to the SureFlow pump. Using ID tubing, I've connected this to an accumulator tank, which basically regulates the pressure of the water. From there, I have it connected to a shutoff valve before it transitions to a shark bite fitting and makes its way either to the shower or into the hot water, uh, into the hot water heater tank. As the water enters the heater and fills up, this will allow me to uh, pick up hot water if I ever want to use that for the rear shower. Or I can tee it off <clears throat> with a shutoff valve and mix it towards the faucet in the front of the camper. All of this is routed behind the kitchen galley and is connected underneath through a PEX to 3 8 um, connection for the hot and cold water faucet. 
The 20 gallon tank is from Northwest Conversions and it goes over the wheel well which saves a lot of space. Um, I've put the heat, uh, water heater on a tray here with, um, with a water sensor which has metal contacts which would basically sound an alarm if um, water was to leak. Just a little extra precaution. And up top here I have the pressure relief valve uh, with a 3 8 uh, tube teeing to the overflow valve from the tank and I've basically routed this through the chassis of the van and empties out below through one of the openings which um, you can actually just uh, screw a little hole and, and push the tube through which is um, quite convenient. Here you can see how quiet this short flow valve is. Paired with the accumulator tank, it does a really good job creating an even flow. I've went ahead and mocked up the cuss water meter gauge on the switch panel here. I had it connected to a switch, which turns it on, and you can see we're about half full. Um, the, the gauge itself has a red LED, which is nice um, if you ever want to turn it on at night. Here you can see how clean and efficient everything is on the back panel with the mixing valve for the shower up top, the water inlet in the middle, and the drain valve on the bottom. For the city water inlet, you will have to use a dedicated hose fitting in order to fill your water tank. There are both pros and cons to this. Um, I found it to be a pro, so that's why I went with it, but others use just a dedicated um, kind of large opening to fill um, their tank. The spray nozzle that came with the shower mixing valve is a press fit connection. You basically take uh, this connection here and push it into the opening and give it a little twist which locks it into place and doesn't actually leak which actually surprised me. I was definitely surprised with how much pressure came out of this nozzle. You could definitely wash your mountain bike or your car with this thing. On the bottom here, I installed a uh, drain valve, which is basically the same type of drain valve you would find like on your, on your washer at home. Um, allows for a typical hose connection, and if you park on a hill, turn the, turn the valve to open, you can empty out your tank relatively quickly if you want to service it. I went ahead and installed this nice discussion or cover around the opening, give it a nice little detail there to make it look finished. I do recommend installing a proprietary button or on-off switch for your, for your pump. In the case that you run out of water, you do want to be able to turn this uh, pump off or else it'll burn out the motor and you'll have to replace the whole thing. And you can see paired with the accumulator tank, the SureFlow uh, pump provides an even flow and uh, you can see there's no pulsating in the water, which, which is awesome and exactly what you want. And just underneath the sink, you can see the five gallon gray water tank doing its job. You can see the water level should you ever need to empty it out. I made a separate video on this installation if you want to check it out. Let's go over the tank connections. The tank has two one and a half inch NTP ports and two half inch NTP ports. I used Blue Monster thread tape on all of my connections and fittings that attach to the Northwest Conversions tank. For the one and a half inch openings, I used a one and a half inch adapter and a half inch elbow, you see here. All of this threaded together with the Blue Monster tape. I went and wrapped the Blue Monster tape about three to four times around each of the fittings. 
The formal name for this fitting is a half inch barb to a half inch MIP. Here you can see what that looks like when it's fully assembled just before it attaches to the Northwest Conversions tank. Be sure to keep in mind the orientation of the inlet or outlet for each fitting, keeping in mind the direction of the tubing you're going to be routing in the cabinet area. Once you have all the fittings installed, you can start to install the tank. You can see here all the fittings and connections, the drain valve, the pickup at the left, the inlet on the top right, and the overflow valve on the top left. You can see with two connections on the bottom and two connections on the top, there are several ways for how you can set this up. With the way I did it, I think it's very efficient and clean, and if you ever need to service the system, it's very logical, and you can identify where the issue is and address it accordingly. With the tank installed and the fittings in place, we can start mocking up the rear panel and where we're going to install the shower mixing valve, the inlet, and the drain valve. I made sure everything was aligned to the right, which made for a really clean look. Here's a quick high-level overview of the Cuss water meter installation. You're going to need a one and a half inch hole saw to drill out this opening on top of the tank. Do your best to minimize the shavings that come off from drilling the plastic. It's gonna be a pain to try and get all this try and get all this out of the tank. You can do this by either filling the tank up with water and emptying it out, or you can blow compressed air into it. Uh, one way you can do this is to fit one of the PEX tubings on a uh, mini vacuum and just suck it all out. Here's what that looks like when it's completely installed. The unit itself only requires a 12 volt connection so you can wire it up just like all your lights and switches, which is very simple and easy. And here's a quick shot of the mixing valve connection to the PEX tubing. This one also has a dedicated valve. Should you ever need to service it, you can shut it off. All right, that's a wrap on my plumbing setup. Hope you guys found this video informative. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. Again, the links to all the products, fittings, components I used will be in the description so you guys can click on that later. But uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.